What's up, what's up, everybody? We're here, Facebook Live, Launch Radio. I am going, I'm Jeff Pilkington. I'm going to get our guest, Mr. Dan Beck, who is a legend in the world of fantasy football. This guy knows fantasy football like nobody you've ever seen in your life. I mean, he, it's incredible. So we're going to be asking him a few questions, getting his idea of the season, uh, you know, just kind of getting a preview from Dan. Um, he's at his, his home office now, so I'm going to uh, dial him in, and we're going to uh, ask some questions, see what he thinks the upcoming season. I might touch on baseball a little bit, and, uh, and we're going to have some fun. So uh, I'm going to get Dan on the line now. Let's go ahead and page him in. Uh, this guy knows fantasy. I mean, I, I, he, I think he's won, like, 12 leagues in 15 years or something. I mean, it's, it's, it's historic. Here he is. Dan, the legend, the myth. Well, not a myth. He is a legend. We know you're a legend, right? <laughs> Mr. Dan Beck. Round of applause. How are you, buddy? You're here. No reasonable today. Fe What's feeling, going on? Feeling reasonable. I, 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 like, the, I like the Broncos. Um, the Broncos shenanigans going on in the background there. That's that's stylish. Well done. Yeah, do you, do you, do you, I got I got my horror. You know, I'm trying trying to show everything that is Dan Beck, <laughs> Colorado. Yeah, you betcha. Okay, yeah. Just if anybody's listening, Dan's got um, blankets and and hats and and shirts. The, everything Colorado and um, uh, John Elway that, that you could possibly dream up. He, he he's got it ready to go. He is a huge Broncos guy, right? I mean, yeah, but born and bred, you know, Golden, Colorado, University of Colorado, and uh, Aunt was a, taught me to be a Broncos fan when I was like five, dude. Wow how how many how many Super Bowls in your lifetime have the Broncos won? Um, they've only they, they've won three, which is good, but we've also been to seven, so we've had to suffer through four terrible losses. Wow, been to, wow. been to seven and won three. That's pretty incredible. Um, well, thanks for coming on today. Uh, spending your thanks time. Thanks for having me, Geoff. Going, going through some, going through some fantasy, some fantasy football stuff. Um, I figured I'd start off and ask you. You know, I know, I know you do baseball too. Um, but, but, but it, baseball is is more recent, right? What, what fantasy sports do you do you currently play? Like. Which ones are you in right now? What are your go-tos? Everything except except NASCAR, pretty much. Um, so down the list: fantasy football, fantasy baseball, fantasy basketball, fantasy golf. Um, I'm not in fantasy rugby, as you uh, you know, threw the joke out. I, I I don't think I could participate in Australian rules rugby fantasy, but. Uh, <laughs> Trying to think if there's oh yeah I'm sorry even fantasy hockey. Fantasy hockey. So pretty much all the major, major sports, and I like to take bets on almost any sport. <laughs> Do you, and you like to yeah I've I've learned that and and, and you're you're good sports better you you you've won some in your day. I've found. I'd say I'm more in the red than I'm in the black, but you know it keeps <laughs> keeps keeps the games interesting of course. That's a win. That's a win always. Um. So, okay, which is your favorite of all of them? Is football the number one then? Football and baseball, maybe? Um, as far as pure fantasy sports, yeah. I mean, I do. I'm a big, as my friends know, I think even you know I'm a big golf guy, but, um, you know, there's really not a whole lot of, it's a very niche sport. There's not a whole lot of uh, friends I know that like to, you know, tune into golf and play fantasy golf, so. Um, as far as competitively, football and baseball are probably my top two. And then, you know, yeah, basketball and hockey kind of keep going from there. Okay, okay. Do you, um, as far as baseball goes, I know we were in a couple leagues this year. You're doing pretty well. We'll just start quickly with a, with a couple quick baseball questions. In baseball, do you think that, uh, do you draft more around pitching or do you draft more around hitting? What's, what's, what do you think is more has more of an impact. I know different people go different directions with that. Well, as you know from our, uh, you know, notorious league, it, it really depends on which league you're in, but the league we're in, 
uh, you can get away with not having a lot of good starting pitching. You really only need a couple good starters and, you know, the rest you can have as relievers. So to break it down, I mean, pretty much emphasize on good uh, home run hitters as far as baseball. I think, the, honestly, I don't I don't see why it's so difficult for, for other people in our league. I think you just need to draft and pick up good home run hitters that get on base and hit a lot of home runs, and people don't seem to get that. So so when you're when people are drafting yeah. baseball, like when they're running the next year and stuff, you, you go for the hitting. You go for home run guys. Yeah, I mean, all fantasy sports is just statistics if you really break it down. it depend, And you, you have to adjust to what whatever is given to you, whether it's in baseball, if you're given on base percentage and you're given, you know, home runs and strikeouts, you, you know, you just have to, you know, look at the big picture and factor all what, what, what will this player, will this player win over the other average, you know, players that are being uh, picked up by everyone else based on their statistics. And you do the same thing with uh, football. And I mean, to be honest, I could jump into almost any fantasy sport and probably be good. You just, it's literally just math. Wow. Okay. So, okay. Um, um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I enjoy the, the the you know the sports and watching it, but a lot of it's just breaking down statistics and math. It's it's pretty much. I mean, it's a it's a mind game. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a mind game. I hear you. Um, and and do you? So, so that does factor in when when you're looking at stats and stuff. I mean, you're pretty much a you, you don't you go more on feel or or do you go strictly on stats? I know this applies to. This can apply to the, the actual sport as well. Um, Geoff, I, but but when you're you drafting, go. is it more about stats or feel? I kind of lost you on that. I think I don't know if it was your reception or mine, but I kind of lost you. What was the question again? Do you go on more on stats or do you go more on feel when you're drafting players? What, what's like if you like a guy, are you more tempted to draft him or do you go on stats alone? Can you hear me? Hopefully, I haven't broken up from G off here. I can. Are, are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? There you go. There you go. Okay. So, what, what was the question again? Do you go more on stats or do you go more on feel when you're drafting players? What's your What's your go to? Stats? Do you use stats or do you go if you like a guy? Um. Um, you know, a little bit of a combination of both, but I mean, most more on the stats side, I hate to say it. I mean, you know, you, you're trying to win your league. You're not trying to play. You're not trying to be a fan. Yeah. If, if, if a player happens to fall on your lap statistically, that makes sense in the draft or where, where, whatever's happening. I mean, it's great, but you know, at the end of the day, you're competing against your friends and and, and you want to win. So you should be drafting. You could, you should set emotion aside and just look at statistics and, Make sure that you're drafting the right person at the right spot. I mean, I'd love yeah. to draft Matt Holiday in the baseball drafts, but, you know, it just doesn't make sense you, these days. Yeah, you're always going to go Matt Holiday or, or John Elway or uh, Bryce Harper. <laughs> He's got, like, a list of people that um, he has to draft every year uh, that, you know, we've discussed. I mean, John Elway hasn't played in, what, 10 years, and Dan drafts him number one all the time, right? I mean, Actually, that – That'd be that'd be a lucky almost nineteen years. Nineteen years. John Elway. Oh, I know. I mean, I don't know anything about John Elway. <laughs> anyway, um, let's uh, let's shift into football here. Um, do you? Um, how many leagues over the course of time in fantasy football do you think you you've won? At, as by the way. Well, I've been in five. Uh, to, you know, at one time, and now I'm only in four, but. Uh, I have won four out of the five, and the the funny thing about that is I the one league I haven't won it in should be my probably easiest league. No offense to my family, but I haven't won my family league. Uh, so you have I've won. Wow. Yeah, I've you know I I I, 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 I am I still here? It said it, it said I left for a second. Yeah, am you're I here? here. Can you hear me? You're here. Okay, good. Um, so I just feel like, you know, I tell f- friends a lot that when they have, you know, problems with fantasy or something doesn't go right, you you pretty much need to look at fantasy like poker, like playing poker, uh, you know, what was it, uh, Texas Hold'em. It's, it, you could be holding aces in your hand 
and lose to a 2-7, um, you know, it's going to happen. Like, 18% of the time, it, uh, that hand in poker, you're going to lose. So if even if you have the most stacked team against a team that looks like it's far inferior, you know, it's not always going to win. You're, you're going to lose, and you're not you're going to question why, and that's just how it goes. Like, you know, it's, it's a random game, and, uh, you know, you just try to put your best skill out there and hope that the, you know, the, the luck comes with. But that's, you know, that's pretty much fantasy is basically another form of, of uh, it's basically like sports poker to, to, to me, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and when you draft, like when you go into it, what, what is your, what is your strategy? Are you, are you a running back uh, first guy? Do you, do you always, if you have the number one overall pick, do you take a running back? Uh, I know there's been some, it's becoming a more wide receiver oriented league. What, what's your strategy there when you're drafting? You, you always draft two running backs first. I'm joking. That that's, that's not at all right. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I used to hear that. used to hear that back when you first played fantasy and, now people just look at them like idiots. Um, it really, it, it's it's all year to year. I mean, you know, you, you're even pretty good at uh, you got a pretty good fantasy mind. Like it's it's year to year. It's it's based off of uh, what commodity of players you know you've got at each position. So if you've got a rarity, like say this year, you know, you really only have a couple good tight ends. So I you know this year I would you know maybe jump ahead of their spot to get like a guy like Travis Kelsey. Um, or if Gronkowski actually is healthy to get one of those guys, because, um, you know, it's, it's, it's more where the rarity of a a real elite player is at their position this year. There's really only like a couple players at quarterback that are good. So if you don't get those, you may, you know, you you probably may as well wait and get, um, elite players at the other position. So, I mean, you know, just getting back to your question, it just really depends on the year and what, what, what commodity of players are out there. Okay, who who do you like? Like, if you were to name your top three to five players this year, who who, who should people be looking at early on in in the draft? Who, who who do you like? One one two three. Who are your who are your top three this year? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, if if you're not in a keeper league, which you know I'm not in most, but yeah, as long as you can draft fresh, one two three would, you know, you probably on four, you know, then you're looking at conservative. You're probably looking at uh, David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell, and um, you, uh, you may want to go Antonio with Brown? like an elite receiver. Yeah, but the only, the only problem with him is Martavius Bryant's coming back this year. I, th- I think he's going to have a little bit of a. I don't think his season's going to be as explosive this year, and and uh, so me personally, I might go Julio Jones over, because first of all, Julio Jones is more of a physical, uh, you know, specimen than An- Antonio Brown. Antonio J- Brown's just fast. He's not. He's not tall and. You know, he's he doesn't have all the tools Julio does, so I I might go Julio at three. I, that, that's my opinion. Really, you would take you would take him in the third spot. Possibly. Um, I mean, but but here's the thing: like, it's it's a tough it's a tough thing. It's it, just like I was saying with commodity. It, it's like, you, you know, I probably would wouldn't, but if you're at the third spot in a twelve team league, you know, you're not going to draft again till number twenty two. Um, yeah. Maybe maybe you surprise everyone and you take uh, you know Aaron Rodgers because maybe he's not. I mean, he hopefully should be around at that other spot. But if he's not, then you know it. It really depends on uh, if if you know what your breakdown is. If if he, there's only a few great quarterbacks this year, and if you don't take him, you know where you can have a chance to get him, then you just won't get him. So I could see. <laughs> logistically someone taking i mean i know it'd be it'd be a reach but i could see someone taking rogers in the top five um a quarterback because they believe the he's, he's going to be far and above the do you think uh, unlikely but it you know it's possible okay do you think that do you think i would draft... probably but i'm just saying I, I i yeah do you do you think draft position matters honestly <laughs> Uh, yeah, for the same reason, it, it, it really depends on, uh, players each year as far as where people kind of fall and how stacked a certain position is and all. So, so if you, 
if there's a far and above the best player out there, I mean, I really don't see that this year. I see there's a couple of good running backs, but I really wouldn't want to be in the number one or two spot because I think you have to wait too long after that to draft. I'd rather be in a probably, you know, a spot of life. I mean, it's in 12 team, probably like towards the end. That way I've got two in the top 13 or two in the top 14. So that, you know, it just, okay. it, if, if, but if there's far and away, like the guy that everyone needs, like there are some years, then sure. All right. All right. So I want to get to some, some quick reader questions. We got, we got five minutes left and then I have one big summary question to ask you. I know how you're probably going to answer it, but, but uh, some questions from, from people ahead of time that they wanted me to ask were, were uh, Colin Kaepernick. Do you think he's going to sign anywhere? Um, only if a team gets desperate and I was having a conversation, uh, um, last night with another friend of mine that I don't really think it's necessarily teams uh, trying to punish him for his whole stand against the, uh, you know, um, you know, black lives and all that. I, th- I think honestly, you know, you see Ezekiel Elliott, you see Martellius or not Martellius, uh, his brother in Seattle who, who just sat the national anthem and, and, you know, their, their teams aren't going to do anything because they're way too talented right now and they need them that bad. So it just shows to me that he they don't really break him down as a really top player that brings us would bring a circus wherever he would come, uh, especially as a backup. And I think that's what happened to like Tim Tim Tebow back when he kind of came to the end of his career is they didn't no one wanted a circus as a backup. And they just I think most teams don't view him as um, much of a actual pocket passer that he just relied on his legs a lot and that he's you know, he might be a little washed up so i i personally i i somehow my prediction might be that he he doesn't actually sign with a team this year okay okay do you think todd Gurley has a bounce back year um for your sake i would love to say yes but um but if if we don't all know this uh geoff is a huge rams fan um but i I think it's going to be a lot of the same. I think he's, uh, I, I don't, unless, unless I, unless Goff makes some huge, you know, um, you know, crazy movement upward and, and is a way better quarterback. I don't see why teams yeah. wouldn't just keep stacking the box with eight and just shutting him down. So I personally would stay away from Gurley in most drafts, but you know, what, what, watch him okay. prove me wrong this year. We'll, we'll see. Okay. Uh, can the Patriots go sixteen and zero? Wait, what was the question? Can the Patriots go sixteen and zero? Can the New England Patriots go? No. No. Will Brandon Cooks make an impact there? Um, so no, they will not go sixteen and zero, and. Yes, Brandon Cooks will make an impact because he's shown he's, you know, fairly unguardable in New Orleans um, with an elite quarterback, and I can't see why with weapons like Gronk and some other of their backfield guys, uh, you know, get Gillisley and, um, why am I, you know, why am I forgetting um, the slot guy, Wes Walker? Um, oh, my God. So, so he will make an impact, though, bottom line. You like Cooks a lot. Yeah, um, but 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 for the th- same thing, I wouldn't draft him crazy high because I think they spread Brady's around old. there. And Brady's old. Tom Brady is old. Like, right? I mean, they don't have a quarterback. He's over the hill. No? <laughs> wow, you're going against the grain. That's uh, That's a bold take. Right now, I would throw out a bet that uh, I bet you Tom Brady finishes top five quarterbacks this year, but I know how <laughs> no, you don't like the bet. Great quarterback. He is. He's a great quarterback. Um, uh, will Marshawn Lynch have an impact in Oakland? What's the, what's the question? Do you like Marshawn Lynch? Will Marshawn Lynch have an impact in Oakland? Marshawn Lynch. Um, I personally think he'll just. I personally think he'll just be mediocre because I think he's older. I think he's probably gained weight. I think he's a little. You know, he's not as he's not as quick, 
and I think it's just a bunch of hype. I, th- I, I, th- I think he'll be a pretty mediocre back this year. I think th- okay. I, I think they they, they should have te- kept Latavius Murray. Okay, okay. And uh, my final question: We got thirty seconds. Do you, who is your Super Bowl prediction this year on both sides, AFC, NFC, and who who wins it? Uh, let's go Broncos and Rams and Broncos to win. Um, that's a joke. I'll take um, I'll take the or the Patriots and. Uh, Mm, I don't want to go Falcons, but right now I'm trying to. I, I'm, I'm going to go. I think it could be a repeat because I think that they'll be hungry to get back. So, Patriots and Falcons again. Patriots and Falcons. I think, I, I think they, they've got all the tools to get back there. You heard it here from Dan. Yeah, Beck, and I and I think. Uh, expert. Thank you for coming on, buddy. Thanks a lot. Hey, my, my pleasure. Go, go Broncos, go Buffs. We'll do this again. All, All right. right. Thanks. We're going to check in with him throughout the season. That was Dan Beck, everybody. We'll see you soon. Thank you, buddy. Glad- All right, Dan Beck. That was Dan Beck, everybody, uh, live from his home Broncos office. He has more Broncos apparel than, than I have uh, uh, Tupperware in my kitchen. I mean, this guy's got, like – Stuff hanging from the ceilings. He is a huge Broncos fan. He knows fantasy football. Unbelievable. Dan Beck, the expert. We're going to keep checking in with him throughout the season. Thank you, everyone, for checking in. This is Launch Radio. I'm Jeff Pilkington, and we will see you next week.